Well, Dan and Mike up, when a man brings me a head, or an individual brings me a head, I always have the neck, the neck knee here mm -hmm. on the carcass. And they usually skin to death at this point. So there's some measurements I always take, which are very important. I take the eye and nose measurement. I use a pair of calipers all the time. Okay. Front corner of the eye to the center of the nose pad. Um, I take that in inches and in millimeters. Millimeters are very accurate. And that's, that's before you skin. That's before I skin the animal. And then you've got probably some kind of a, uh, a measurement chart or something. You record that. Right. I go on the measurement chart. Second measurement I always take is the neck measurement. Mm -hmm. I take it to throw latch, tightest point behind the ears. Okay. And the throat latch being? At the junction of the neck here. Okay. And then tied on the ears? Yeah. yeah. Sure and that's right. like, uh, would be like RC measurement in the catalog. Right. right. Sure what I'm talking about. I'll take my tape. This is on the meat. Since this is a commercially tanned cape, um, the final prepping involves removing all the excess flesh around the eyes, the tear ducts, the nostrils, and the mouth. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually set this over a flushing beam. I start on my eyes. And since I use, uh, I do not use the tuck method, I use what I call the lay method. I'll remove all the flesh, extra flesh, off the cape from around the eyes, out about an inch and a half. By doing this, you just work your scalpel. Uh, or how do you know you're getting close to, to having enough of the, 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 you know, leather removed there? That okay. You got the thing thin enough, right. too thick, you know. Right. How do you make the call there? Well, you just got to remember that when you're when you're mounting a piece, the thinner the leather is, the less it's going to shrink. Okay. You know, that's something that everybody needs to consider. Um, as you're fleshing the piece. There'll be a color change in the leather as you're going through it. When you get real close to the epidermis layer, which is on the opposite side where the hair is at, you're going to have a, a bluish color come through. I see. Which is the, the pigment of the skin. So it just works. And, that, and when you start seeing that blue, that's when you know? That's when you know you're rel relatively close. And that's where you basically need to you know, stop fleshing any deeper than that. And the reason you, you say thinner is the thinner the better. That is because of the shrinkage factor as it dries? That's right. When you get to the edge of the eye here, mm -hmm. where the lid is at, okay. there's a small area here where you can see where the eyelashes go through. You might see some little black dots as you're prepping this off. Mm -hmm. You want to make sure you get to that. There's little oil pockets there. A little yellow oil pockets. Right. And you want to be able to get down into there, you right? Open those up and get that out of there. Okay. Those will, those will dry and shrink. It'll okay. distort your lid when it dries. Okay. You see, I fleshing like from the edge of the eye here. I lid. I flush it back there a good inch, inch and a half. So since we're we're going to use liners on this ticker here. I leave my cartilage on mm -hmm. through the tanning process. Okay. Even though you're going to use an airliner and remove that cartilage, you leave the cartilage intact. Right. I leave it intact so, through the tanning process. Mm -hmm. And then the skin actually will shrink mm -hmm. more than it actually would if it was left on the cartilage. I see. Um, if you send them off to a commercial tannery, I, I never recommend pulling the cartilage prior to, to doing that. I see. So the commercial tannery, when they when they tumble in sawdust or grit, brittle mm -hmm. tub, that air sometimes will fill up with sawdust or blow that air out. I see. Um, it still happens even with the cartridge left on, but a lot less often. I can uh, see now the the whiskers around the eyes there, the, uh, the little dots there. Right, right. Kind of working around those mm -hmm. now. See where that eyelid is at? Mm -hmm. See that color change there? And because I used the, the lay method, I'm actually going to trim this off with my scissors. So now I'm going to do the next side. Now that I flush the other side, I'm just going to remove this excess skin. A pair of scissors. And I take it down right to where the color change is at on the eyelid. See where that color change is? Mm -hmm. That lighter color is on the inside of the skin as it rolls into the eye. Okay, Mark, now that we've got the cartilage out of it, we need to uh, choose our airliners, the size we need. Okay, we've got a couple of choices here. It's nice to have a couple of 
sizes on hand because this is a large cape here. This is 23, 22, 23 inch cape. And uh, one might assume that the larger airliners would go with this, the larger size that we have, but uh, that's not always the case. So this is our medium size airliners here. And as you can see, they're too big. So let's go down a size and see. Yeah, I do have a smaller size. Okay, and as you can see there, those are going to fit. Taking into consideration, I did lose some of the cartilage off of the ear when I skinned it. Mm -hmm. I think it'll still, still be okay. Should have a good fit here. So we'll just slide this ear liner in there and, and uh, just double check it real quick. And uh, as you can see, so just kind of you got to kind of wind your uh, your edges around, line them up, and everything. But you can see that's like perfect fit. Mm -hmm. No drumming. You can reach in there, and and the edges aren't drumming. And yeah. So once you have your adhesive on there, right? That adhesive will squeeze up around the edges there. Right. Take up any slack right. if there any imperfections, right. and uh, also uh, it'll act as a lubricant, and the airliner will fit more easily. Okay, Dan. Now that I've got the mannequin prep and ready to be mounted on. Um, I assume you're going to show us now how to apply the clay into the airliner right. form the butt. Right. And uh, the first thing you want to do when you do that is, um, what I like to do is, is peel the ear back a little bit like this. So that you can, uh, that this transition between the airliner and the ear butt, you, know, you can get that a lot more smooth by, by peeling it back. So just maybe about like this or so. And uh, reference, once again, is important. What, we want, what we're trying to achieve here with clay is uh, to replace this part of the ear, the, the part of the ear that um, you know, goes on the mannequin. We can do that with clay, and I, I like to do that with clay because you have a little bit, uh, a little bit more uh, freedom when you, when you go to pose your ear, having something like clay to work with. Okay, and a good way to, to uh, help yourself out as far as getting some symmetry is to take, um, you know, two equal balls of clay, approximately the same size, one for one ear and one for the other. Okay, you've got your, your hide peeled back here. First thing I like to do then is take a mound of clay off of here and just kind of roll it out in your hands. And this area right down in here, this is where we're working, right in here. Just for that transition, I'm going to kind of lay a little bit of clay right around here. Just kind of like a, encircling the whole thing, just mm -hmm. kind of like a donut. When you set the eyes in the mannequin, you want to make sure that the eyes are level. Today I'm going to use the eye level. There's a couple different ways you can do this. You can actually set it on top of the brow of the head, or you can line it up with the tear duct. I choose to lay it on the, the bridge of the nose and roll that up. Make sure that head is level. That's going to allow you to level your pupils up when you set your eyes. Now that you've got your head level, make sure it's nice and tight. Choose the proper eye for the mannequin. These mannequins were sculptured to accept the first honest eye. And I'm going to believe in the socket and believe in the sculpture itself. These eyes are a zero tilt and a 33 degree angle. Now if I take this eye, actually set it in the mannequin at the base, that is the depth of my eye before I set clay. All you're going to need to do is apply a small amount of clay to the back of the eye itself. And make sure my clay is in the back of my eye. And I'll use a headlamp. This is the absolute ticket to setting an eye. It's a good light. 
you want to do is adjust your lamp so you don't have to use both your hands, one holding a flashlight and one holding a, an eyeball. Center your eye in your socket. Just press it in. And keep that eye up against the back of that socket. You want your pupils level to the ground. We'll grab a, a reference photo and you can see that where this pupil is at, it actually comes above the tear duct trough. This is the tear duct trough. And that pupil alignment comes out just above that trough. Okay, for the eyelids, what you want to do is take equal amounts of clay. Now, since these are small balls of clay, we probably will not use all this on each eye. So roll these out in small hot dog looking shapes. Make sure the rolls are congruent and in length and size. Now this is what we're going to use on each eye. So actually you're not using very much clay at all. Then, no. Right? In fact, I probably won't use all this clay at all either. The way these models are sculptured takes very little clay. So I noticed you're dividing that out. Would that be for upper and lower lid then? Actually, I lay my lower lids on first. I want to make sure that my clay rolls are approximately the same size. Then I'll come back and roll my, my lids out for my upper. But what I've got here is I've got the two balls of clay that's left over for left and right eye, approximately the same size. And I will take these and we'll actually lay them on our mannequin. Okay, now that we've got our clay here, I actually just set my left amount of clay on top of my brow. Start from the edge of that hot dog roll of clay there. Actually lay that in to fill the void, the gap between the eye itself and the mannequin. And you see that alignment point there? That's actually where the lower lid starts to roll into the top lid. And all you're doing here is replacing the amount of material from the mannequin to the glass eye. And we've got this amount of clay left over. Right here would be the peak of the eye, actually, right at the front of the pupil. Now you can take your modeling tool and you can actually achieve that by putting it in your clay. But since I use a fairly thick skin paste, when I put my skin paste over my, my clay here, I can achieve that with my modeling tool right inside my skin. So now that we've got our eyes roughly set in place and the eyelids in place, we're going to now actually just put skin paste on the mannequin and pull the skin on. Now I've got my lid stuck. Now I'm going to pull my nose into position and actually just tuck my skin down to my nostrils. And that, I actually am going to use a riffler file. It'll grab onto that skin and press it in place. So I just push that skin in there. It's thin. Press it in right into the nostril opening. 